Hi guys, Mr. Palmer here with another AP free response question. This is from 2011 Form B number two. This problem about gas laws involves the decomposition of a sample of methanol gas, 8.55 moles to be exact. It asks some questions about that dealing with equilibrium and stoichiometry. That's this part A. Then it asks us some stuff about kinetic energy and then finishes with something about solubility. So we're gonna start with the part that asks us about equilibrium and about stoichiometry. So let's zero in on part A. In the prompt at the top, you're gonna see that it's telling us that we have an 8.55 mole sample of methanol. That's what's in the container. It gives us the volume of the container is 15 liters and tells us that it is evacuated. Evacuated means there's nothing else in it. We're only starting with the methanol. It's gonna go on to tell you the temperature and also that as this reaction goes on, it's gonna decompose to make two things, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. So that's the CO and the H2. So part A says that the reaction mixture contains 6.30 moles of carbon monoxide once it reaches equilibrium at 327 degrees Celsius, that same temperature, and it's asking us to find the moles of hydrogen in the tank. So even though this is a problem and we can set up the ice, which we're actually gonna do next, this first part of the question is actually pretty straightforward. It involves just doing stoichiometry. So we're gonna take what we're told, which is 6.30 moles of CO that's gonna be in the tank. We're gonna go up to our balanced chemical equation and we're gonna see that the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation is one to two. So we're gonna set it up putting those in, that is one mole of our carbon monoxide, the CO, for every two moles of hydrogen gas, that's gonna be the H2. Our moles are gonna cancel out and we're gonna be left with 12.6 moles of hydrogen. I'm gonna guess that you don't need a calculator for that, but you will have one just in case you don't, okay? So that's part one, pretty easy. Let's go on to part two. So in part two, it asks us to calculate the number of grams of CH3OH, that's our methanol, that are remaining in the tank. So remember, initially we had some amount of this stuff. Once we reach equilibrium, some of it's going to be gone. So that's gonna set up an ice situation. So let me just write out ice, which again stands for, remember, I'll highlight this again, initial, that's I, C, that's our change, and finally E is going to be our equilibrium set of conditions. So in the problem, or in the prompt, it told us that there's 8.55 moles of methanol. So let me take my methanol, 8.55. I'm not gonna write the moles, I'm just writing the number. It was evacuated so that both of these were zero. We started with none of the others. In the prompt part of A, it told us that at equilibrium we had 6.3 moles of the CO. So it's telling us here that this is 6.3, let me get a different color, 6.3 once we reach equilibrium. And in part one, we found out that this was 12.6 for the hydrogen moles. So just based on that, we know that this one had to go up by 12.6, this one had to go up by 6.3, zero, which means from our balanced equation, we always go back to our equation in stoichiometry, we see we have a one to one to two ratio, which means that this one for the methanol had to go down by 6.30. That's my methanol. That's coming from the balanced chemical equation up here. This relationship is where I'm coming up with that. All we have to do now to find the equilibrium amount is do a subtraction. We're gonna do 8.55 minus 6.3, and that's gonna leave you with 2.25 moles, and I will pick yet another color. That are gonna be remaining, but that's not what the problem is. Really important, go back to the question. Look, it says grams, it's looking for a mass. It's not looking for a moles. So we gotta do one more step here. We're gonna take the amount that we have, the 2.25 moles of our methanol, we know that this is the amount that is remaining, and we're gonna convert that into 
grams. So you're going to go to your periodic table. You're going to look up the elements, what they are. Find out that it's 32.04 grams in every one mole. And pull out your calculator, type that in. We're going to wind up with 72.1 grams of methanol remaining. So that's how we get through part two. So now let's go on to talk about three because this is where the gas law really comes in. In part three, it says calculate the mole fraction of hydrogen in your tank. The mole fraction of hydrogen that's going to be in your tank. So let's go back to what our definition of mole fraction is. If you recall, mole fraction has the symbol X. We're looking for hydrogen in this case. So it's the moles of the thing that you're looking for, your chemical, over the moles total of all the gases that are in the container. So for us, well, what was in the container? What, what was it that was in there? We're looking for the hydrogen. So we're going to put moles of hydrogen on top and moles of everything that's in the container on the bottom. And there's three different things in our container. So if I click back, let's go to our equilibrium values. The numbers I'm taking are right here. Okay, these are the numbers. That's what's left in our container after we do this. So let's figure out what that's gonna be. We have 2.25 moles of the methanol. So that's moles of CH3OH on the bottom and the moles of CO and the moles of hydrogen all added together. So now that we know that, let's substitute our numbers in. The hydrogen was 12.6 if you recall from that. Moles on top. We're going to have 2.25 for the moles of methanol that were remaining plus 6.3 moles of the carbon monoxide and finally we still have to include the hydrogen 12.6 moles I'm not gonna write moles at the end of our hydrogen so just to reduce this down we've got 12.6 on the top if we add the bottom correctly that's gonna give us 21.15 and you're gonna see why it's important for us to do that in the next step that comes out to be 0 0.596 0 0.596 now, 0.596 what? There's no units on this. A mole fraction is exactly that. It's a fraction. It's a unitless number. You could think about that as being 59.6% of the particles that are in the container being hydrogen. Or, as a mole fraction, we just call it 0.596. So, why is that important? Let's go to the next part, which is part four. This one is asking us to do the total pressure in the tank. So. Now we need to find a total pressure from a mixture. Normally what you guys would think is, hey, that sounds like Dalton's law of partial pressures. Pressure one plus pressure two plus pressure three. It, da, 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 da. It's gonna give me my pressure total whenever I have a mixture of gases. But the great thing about gases is because when they're in this container, it doesn't really matter what they are. All we're interested in is the number of moles. For this problem, we can simply use our PV equals NRT equation, our ideal gas equation, to find that total pressure, and we can use the total moles. So we're gonna go back over here, and we know that in our container, we had a total number of moles of 21.15, 21.15. So let's come back over here. 21.15 is our total number of moles that we're gonna put here. And we've pretty much told everything else. We know the volume of the tank from the prompt. We know the temperature from the prompt. We're gonna look up the R value and we're gonna substitute into that equation. So if we're looking to find the pressure, the pressure is gonna be equal to NRT over V. Okay, so what was our N? So from the last problem, we said that our N was going to be 21.15. Right, so the interest of space, I'm not putting in all of my units. R value has to be in liter atmospheres, 0.0821. Temperature, again, temperature has to be in Kelvin. Always gotta be in Kelvin. So I'm gonna put this over here in a different color. It's 327 plus 273. We have to add that on to get that into Kelvin, which is gonna give you a total of 600K. 
that's what that's going to come out to be. And the volume was given to you in the prompt. So the volume from the prompt was 15 liters. That's not going to change. It's a rigid vessel. We're going to plug that into your calculator and come out with 69.5 atmospheres for your final pressure of the mixture. Didn't ask us what any of the other pressures were, just the total pressure of the mixture of gases. Now, the rest of this question is parts B and C. B deals with intermolecular forces. So we kind of have to go back, I'm sorry, dealing with kinetic energies. We have to go back and kind of talk about what that means. What about kinetic energies for gases? So it says, consider the three gases in the tank at 327 degrees Celsius. They're telling us what the three were. It's the same scenario. And the question asks, how do the average kinetic energies of the molecules of the gases compare? Well, the big important idea here is that when gases are in a container together, they share two things. They share a total volume and they're also going to share a temperature. For these gases, whenever they're in a mixture, all of these things have to be the same. They're going to have the same volume and they're going to have the same temperature. If you have gases at the same temperature, well, what does that mean about their average kinetic energies? Well, for us, remember what the definition of temperature is. Really, temperature is the average kinetic energy, or more correctly, we say that temperature is proportional, directly proportional to the average kinetic energy. So the answer to this question is, they're all the same. How do they compare? The kinetic energy of each of the gases, the average kinetic energy of each of the gases is going to be the same. So for all three gases, they have to be equal. And that's really what this question was looking for. Did you understand that? But the follow up to this, what does part B say, or sorry, part two say? Part two says, hey, which gas has the highest average molecular speed? So which one is going the fastest? And if you recall, back in class, we had two really important graphs that we talked about. One graph was a graph of the same gas at different temperatures, which is the first one I have here, which is oxygen. Make it a little bigger. And the second graph is a graph of a bunch of different gases at different temperatures. I'm sorry, at the same temperature. Okay, so from these two graphs, let's talk about what's happening. So in the first one, we see oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius and oxygen at 1,000 degrees Celsius. Little thing confusing about this is they put <laughs> the colder one in red and the hotter one in blue, which is, you know, doesn't particularly make me happy about this because we always think of red as being hot. But the hotter one is actually the one that's in blue here at 1,000 degrees. And what we're looking at for this graph, right, the average kinetic energy, or rather the average molecular speed, is somewhere right in here. For this one, at the lower temperature, the average speed is down here, which is really telling us that at the two different temperatures, the oxygen molecule moves slower when it's at a lower, I'm sorry, at a lower molecular speed when it's at a lower temperature. That totally makes sense to us, right? If it's going slower because it has a lower temperature. But what is the difference between molecules and their molar mass? So how does the molar mass affect the molecular speed? So let's go down and look at the different graph, the one at the bottom. You're gonna see we got oxygen and we go all the way down to hydrogen over here. And we'll see that the average speeds, you just get a different color here, the average speeds for helium, or rather hydrogen, and helium, and for water, if we're looking at the averages, the average speed is going to go down as the molar mass goes up. So what do we have right here? Oxygen is 32 grams per mole, while hydrogen is going to be two grams per mole. So the smaller the molecule is, the faster it's traveling at the same temperature. So we notice in this graph, this one down here is same temp different molar mass. The one at the top is same molar mass. It's at a different temperature. So faster temperature or higher temperature, faster molecular speed. If you've got a bigger molar mass, 
slower molecular speed at the same temperature. So well, what gases are we comparing here? The three gases that we're comparing are methanol, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen gas. So clearly, if we're just looking at them in terms of the molar mass, this one says which has the highest average molecular speed. The one with the highest average molecular speed is going to be hydrogen because it's got the smallest molar mass, much smaller than either methanol or carbon monoxide. Finally, this question asks us something about solubility. The tank is cooled to 25 degrees Celsius, which is well below the boiling point of methanol. So our methanol is going to condense. It says that a small amounts of hydrogen and carbon monoxide have dissolved in this liquid methanol. Which of the two gases would you expect to be more soluble? So this is about solubility. And it says at the end, justify your answer. You can't just say one or the other. So you have to say why it's going to be. Well, in this case, what we got to look at is intermolecular forces. How do the intermolecular forces of these molecules compare? And that's what's going to tell us. If you recall, the rule that we always said is like dissolves like. Like dissolves like. So things that are similar in terms of their structure and intermolecular forces are going to dissolve in each other. So what you really need to think about is what are the structures of these molecules? I have methanol, which is an alcohol. We've got this structure. We've got methanol. We've got carbon monoxide. So I'm going to draw carbon monoxide over here, CO. And the best way we can draw it like this is with a triple bond. And finally, we've got our hydrogen. So what's hydrogen look like? Hopefully, you know that hydrogen just has two electrons being shared. Okay, so there's our Lewis dot structures. Well, what kind of bonding could be taking place in these molecules? If we look at carbon monoxide, let's take a look at this one first. This is pretty straightforward molecule. We've got carbon, we've got oxygen. Carbon, if you can remember, has got 2.5 for an electronegativity. Oxygen has 3.5 for an electronegativity leaving us an electronegativity difference of one, which means that this is going to be a dipole. The negative side being the oxygen side, the positive side being the carbon side. Hydrogen should be pretty straightforward for you. If you're looking at that, they're both exactly the same. So this is a nonpolar molecule, completely nonpolar bond. And if we look at the methanol, which is an alcohol, we see that we've got these lone pairs around the oxygens right here. We've got hydrogen connected to an oxygen. We call whenever we've got oxygen connected to a hydrogen, generally we've got a hydrogen bond. Remember hydrogen bonds are fun. If you have hydrogen connected to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, we'll wind up with hydrogen bonding. So we definitely have a dipole here in this molecule. We've got a dipole with, let me pick a different color, maybe green. We've got the oxygen pulling that direction, giving us negative here and a positive over there. So we've got two things that are dipoles. Dipole interactions, we call them dipole dipole. So the ones that are going to be the most similar are the two polar molecules. We've got methanol and carbon monoxide. So if you're going to answer this question, it says which of the two gases? Well, which of the two gases? Well, the choice is going to be definitely, hopefully you're realizing it, you've got to pick this guy over here, carbon monoxide to dissolve in the methanol, not the hydrogen. And you should have some reference to what kind of intermolecular bonding is going to be there. Dipole-dipole forces, that those two can interact, whereas dispersion forces are the only kinds of interaction that the hydrogen bonds, or the, sorry, that the hydrogen molecules are going to be able to make in this one. Okay, that's it for this problem, and we'll be back with another one soon.